Hello, Neon here, the Science HQ, here to read the episodes of The Great Defeat, All About Silver Magic, Special Project GHO, and Good Hex Blades in Training. The Great De we'll start with The Great Defeat. After their exiling, the Hex Blades wander the galaxy, being led by Decker. Meanwhile, at the main GTO base, tensions are rising in the GTO and the slants, what with the main concerns of always on this year's The Void. Remus orders in new weapons on the GTO elect Slug to be the mentor of Poobage, who just got his new prosthetic leg. After receiving a declaration of war from the Seers of the Void, the Slants and the rest of the GTO engage against the Seers in many battles that go across the galaxy, eventually leading to a fight on Alpha Island on the planet Ulela. Once the Slants get to the island, they notice that only Voizon is there, and the Slants, along with a group of GTO soldiers, draw their weapons. Voizon does a small signal, and many Void soldiers who are injected with black magic to make them stronger, along with many high-grade mechs, come out of the bushes. A battle begins, and Remus feels something inside him, and his eyes glow silver. Then he uses spells from different types of chromatic magic and a silver color against the Seer of the Void, which is odd because Remus should be magically mundane. After some fighting, Remus creates a quantum beam, and he directs it at Voizon, who gets hit by it. Voizon is hurt, but is still conscious. The quantum beam exhausts Remus, making him unable to use silver magic for the time being. Voizon then gets into one of the mechs, and the surviving Void soldiers go into mech 2. All the mechs use their jets to fly above Alpha Island. Voizon then combines explosives toward the mech with dark magic to make a me mega bomb. Voizon then drops the bomb on Alpha Island. The slants, along with the remaining GTL soldiers, scramble into the few slant jets that they have before the bomb hits the island. Alpha Island explodes in the slants' way because they try to chase the Seers of the Void, who have went to their nearby base. Once the slants get back to the GTO base, Adzon opens up a pur purple portal to the Utopian dimension, where he says that he has to find some important information. Dr. Goodwill also gets a call from the Federation Counselor Oran. Dr. Goodwill talks with Oran for some time, and he tells the Slants that he needs that he, that he needs to go to the planet Noru to help the Federation deal with the, Z the growing Xamron Horde and the Neobi Slaver Empire threats, and so he departs from Oro. Episode continued in the, in the mini episode all about silver magic published um published several weeks and thir several weeks ago silver all about silver magic mini episode a few days after dr wall's departure adds on arrives at the gto base he brings in a document made out of bound tablets titled that the entire document is written on, in the utopian language which oliver knows for about two hours, Adzon and Oliver translate the document, which turns out to be called Silver Magic and Soul Beams. After the translation, the slants read it and get this information. The type of magic that Remus uses is called Silver Magic or Grey Magic. Only magically mundane beings can use Silver Magic. Deities, Utopians, demigods, mortals, creatures, and animals all have some degree of magic in them. Users of silver magic can cast spells from all types of chromatic magic, including white, black, and quantum magic. The beam that Remus made when he defeated Barbargan was called the Soul Beam. Soul Beams kill the mortals, deities, and other beings that use them, but but a but demigods survive their use and become magically mundane mortals. A soul beam can kill anyone they are used against. A large amount of Utopians used soul beams to start the Big Bang. After learning this, the GTO stores this information in the Slant Archives to be continued right here in Special Project GHO. Warning, this episode will be crazy. The Slants are called to the GTO base on Noru, where Dr. Goodwell is presently residing to help efforts to stop the fast-growing Neogi Empire and the looming Xamaron Horde, where, De where Decker and the Hexblades are por parking their ship. They, surrounded by dozens of GTO troops, peacefully put down their weapons, surprising the Slants in the GTO. Decker brings up matters of a diplomatic deal, and he and his Hexblades are brought inside, where Decker discusses the GTO and the Hexblades joining forces. Goodwell's reluctant at first, but he is, he is drawn in when he realizes that their common enemy, Voizon, the annoying Qual guy, is growing in power and must be taken out despite all costs. He then instructs all the Hexblades and GTO agents to close their eyes, which they do, excluding Remus, who barely squints. As Goodwell takes the Superlock key out of Book of Law number 22, blasts a quantum silver beam into it, and unlocks a lock behind a bookcase opening, a wall, opening up a wall. The, o the 
open wall leads to the black room, a known spot where secret meetings are held. Then Dr. Grunewald get, gets back on the intercom and announces that everyone can open their eyes now. But then Goodwell communicates to Remus through Remus's earpiece and instructs Slug and Remus to do the same thing that Decker and Goodwell did. Slug and Remus, after getting into the black room, go down go down a staircase, unlock the space under that staircase with the same key, go net and donate another, open up one of those stairs, and crawl into what seems like an abandoned GTO base, almost an exact replica of the base of stairs, almost as if the base of stairs was built on top of this base. Remus and Slot go into the room where Decker and Goodwell are meeting, and they say that they will work together under the deal that Decker nor the Hexblades can ever go back into a life of crime again under any circumstances, or there may be severe punishments. Dr. Goodwill says he needs Slug and Remus' signature to put Project GHO, good hexploit organization, into effect. Realizing what the, what's at stake and what needs to be done, they sign. To be continued, right here, mini episode, Hexploit, good hexploits in training. Kubish is monitoring the training of, of the Sigma Slants, the X Hexblades, com- that are not that are commonly nicknamed X Blades within the Slants. He talks to one, a Janarian, who explains that, that to explain to Kubish that the, that that as a Janarian, um, he never he he always felt as an outcast, as he didn't want to do anything that Janarians usually do. So he joined the evil Hexagons. Kubish com- comforts him and goes to Decker. Who has, who has his own sob story. Decker says that he grew up in poverty and joined the Critigans to prove they had a purpose. He did well as a Critigan, but when they collapsed, he joined the Hexagons where they had little ease for him and several others. Him and the others were eventually kicked out by Voison, and so here and so here they are now. Kubish comforts Decker and convinces Decker that he has some good in him, and goes back to supervising the Sigma Slants. And that was the episode of The Great Defeat, all about silver magic, special part of GHO, and good hex ways in training. And after the and after this, the next the next three episodes will be Return to Corholia and Take Over Part and the next four episodes will be Return to Corholia, Take Over Part One, presumably Take Over Part Two, and another upcoming episode after that. And after and after those and after all those episodes there will not be another episode until June 22nd. June 22nd, 2021, second anniversary of the final battle against John Dias. Um, the third episode of these of this new Krahulia saga will publish tonight at 6.30 p.m. on slantshq.wibby.com slash reforged. Well, this is Neok here. Um, re- I have read the episodes Great Defeat, all about Silver Magic, GHO, and Good Hexblades in Training. Have a nice day.